Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another edition of a podcast that we call Things We Said Today. This is a Beatles show that centers around what's going on in the world of the Beatles news-wise. And every single week there's always something to talk about what's going on with the Beatles, whether it's Paul, Ringo, something posthumous on John or George, or something about the group. Or people in their lives, for that matter. I'm Ken Michaels. I'm one of the co-hosts of this show, best known for the syndicated radio show, Every Little Thing, being joined by the man who writes the news and knows more about what's going on news-wise with the Beatles than anybody else on the planet. <laughs> oh I'm building God. you up here, man. <laughs> oh, man. Talk about, talk about, a, talk about a, something to live up to. That's right. I'm going to make Great. this real difficult for you. Yes, you are. Steve Marinucci is with us. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hi, everybody. Our show this time will concern the Grammy Awards, and we're doing this show, we're recording this show just a few days after the 55th Grammy Awards telecast, which was on uh, February the 10th of 2013. And in case some of you may not know this, Paul McCartney won, well, actually, he figures in two Grammys, but the most important one being for Best Traditional Pop Vocal Album, for Kisses on the Bottom. And in addition to that, he's uh, part of an album that Jimmy Fallon released called Blow Your Pants Off, which has material taken from his TV show. And Paul was on last year, and they did a a duet of sorts doing their own uh, parody, not parody, or spoof on Yesterday, using the original lyrics, or the, the title, the original title of Scrambled Eggs. And that won Best Comedy Album. And Paul was on that. So in his own way, Paul figured in two Grammy Awards. But we're mainly going to talk about the fact that he won this award. And then I thought it would be really interesting. We both thought it would be interesting if we would reflect back on the Grammy Awards in the past and discuss whether or not we think the Beatles have been treated fairly through the years with Grammy Awards, whether as a group or in their solo careers. So first of all, just very quickly, Steve, your thoughts about Paul winning Best Traditional Pop Vocal Album? Well, he didn't have a whole lot of competition in that category. He had, uh, there were two Christmas albums, Michael Buble and and Carole King, and so... Buble. Buble, oh, excuse me. (laughs) Um, And so his chances of winning that award were pretty good. I mean, he, it was going to be hard for him not to, to win that, and he did. So uh, I'm not totally surprised. I think you could have put money on that one in, you know, in Atlantic City or in, in Vegas and, and made some money easily uh, if the odds were halfway decent. Well, you never know. I mean, the industry does like Carol King. She mm-hmm. is one of the greatest artists and songwriters of all time, and Michael Bublé is also a favorite. So I wouldn't say it was you know, an automatic win. Yeah, but neither of those albums really had the impact that Kisses on the Bottom did. Even though uh, Kisses wasn't a huge, huge hit, I mean, it had a big splash with the with the uh, live Kisses PBS thing, and it was going to be pretty hard not to, not for that thing to win. Well, actually, than... it went top ten on the album charts, and it also made number one on the jazz charts, right? which was a new thing for Paul. Right. That territory right, right there. Right. So it, it did make some splash. I don't know how much of an impact, because... He's pretty much following what a lot of artists like Rod Stewart have been doing recently. And we all know Ringo did it in 1970. He doesn't get enough credit for it. No. But um, I, I, for one, am very pleased that he won. I'm, I'm happy whenever any of the Beatles win a Grammy Award. And, but... I, and, and, and to compare, you know, after all this time, to compare Kisses to what Rod Stewart has done, Kisses is much better. It's much easier to take than what Rod Stewart has done. I still kind of grimace every time I hear Rod Stewart singing some of those songs, and especially hearing this Christmas that he went and did Christmas songs. That really that really was hard to take. Hmm. Um, but, I mean, it's making him money, so you can't complain too much, but I think that uh, Kisses was well done. I think it it was, was a well-executed album, great musicianship, great arrangements. You know, everything about it was just wonderful. And, and I'm and curious as to whether he's going to do a follow-up. 
I hope he does. We just know that from all that we're hearing, he's about to make another pop album next. So if anything, it won't even happen till after that. So why don't we talk about the Grammy Awards of the past and how the Beatles have fared, group and solo-wise. And before we even discuss that, I just want to commend you because many years ago, going back to when you had your Abbey Road uh, mm -hmm. website, you put together a list of all the Grammy Awards the Beatles received. And not only that, but what some might find even more interesting is when they were nominated and lost. And you'd be surprised how many times the Beatles lost, group and oh, solo-wise, yeah. through the years. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's really fascinating to look at all that stuff. And, you know, there are a lot of people... I, I suppose you just, as you get older... In the case of a lot of friends of mine, they get very cynical about award shows. I mean, the Grammy Awards don't mean as much to me as they did when I was younger. I look mm -hmm. forward to watching the Grammy Awards every single year. And a lot of that had to do with the simple fact that the people who were up there being nominated were people that I was following at the time. And that doesn't mean that the new artists of today I'm not following. I do follow some new music, so I look forward to hearing some of the new artists. But I tend to watch the Grammy Awards and root for the veterans. <laughs> And not just Paul here, but uh, when someone comes up on stage, like Elton John, for example, and they right. do that, that tribute to Levon Helm, I look forward to things like that. So I always uh, enjoy the Grammys from the perspective of looking forward to the performances. I may not know all the music, but um, I don't know if the Grammy Awards mean as much to me now as they once did. And, you know, a lot of that just has to do with the fact that I don't know if the music of today and the current artists of today, if that music will have the kind of longevity and sustaining power of the music that I grew up with. So, but we may be trailing off on a subject there. But as far as the awards that the Beatles have won and not won, tell me from your own perspective how well you think the Beatles have done, Steve. I think their, their standing has improved over time. I think in the beginning... A lot of what happened was dictated by the way the industry was at the time. And, you know, in 64, it was an adult-oriented industry. It was run by old men who really didn't care much about these young upstarts. And although the Beatles did get some awards in their early years, there was a lot they didn't get, an astonishing number of uh, awards that they didn't get. And, uh, and also, what's really more telling is some of the people they lost too you can really i mean there it's just absolutely astounding when you think of who they lost to uh in some of those early years um but the fact number one that they they did come through with best new artist in 64 against patula clark antonio carlos joe beam and uh astro Gilberto and morgana king who I think is that's I think I, and I when I see Morgana King's name I think of The Godfather I think that's amazing, <laughs> but they at least got that they got also a best performance by a vocal group for A Hard Day's Night which was kind of interesting that they got that, mm. but they also there were also a couple they didn't get that year they didn't get Record of the Year for I Want to Hold Your Hand they lost to get some Gilberto for Girl from Ipanema. They didn't get the Songwriters Award for A Hard Day's Night. They lost to Hello, Dolly. They didn't get the Best Rock and Roll Recording. They lost to, of all things, Petula Clark Downtown. Rock and Roll? Well, downtown. you know, uh, for many years, and this is not just the 60s, there was always this general feeling that the artists who won these awards were safer artists, mm -hmm. more mainstream, more pop-oriented. So it doesn't surprise me, and... Because of the fact that I have very wide, eclectic tastes, I'm not necessarily offended by some of these other artists that won. I mean, if, if the Beatles are up against Frank Sinatra, and Sinatra happens to win, which he did several times against which the he Beatles. Did, which he did uh, first in 65, he did tw uh, against them twice. Yeah. I mean, this is Frank Sinatra you're talking about. So it's it doesn't bother me as much when it's someone that's so iconic and so important to our culture you know i don't know it just it, it doesn't bother me uh, although you know being the big beetle fan that that i am and that you are i'm sure that you wish that every time they were nominated they would win 
you probably well, think I that could... their music might have been better than the other artists. And you have to, you always have to weigh it against what was uh, also nominated at that time. And, you know, when you're talking about certain songs like um, The Girl from Ipanina won mm-hmm. one particular year, that's a great song. And it's, it's, it's Yeah, it was in 64, yeah. It's, a, it's not only a great pop song, it's, it's become a standard and, and a great song in the jazz field. So it's, mm-hmm. I don't really, it doesn't bother me that much when the Beatles lose to an artist that has really made an impact on our culture and is extremely talented and has endured through the years, and the same thing with a particular song. I mean, I want to just bring up this one particular time. I was curious because I didn't remember whether or not All Things Must Pass, the album, had been nominated, and it was. It was. For Album of the Year, and it lost out to Carole King's Tapestry. Now, I would have been thrilled if All Things Must Pass had won, but (laughs) this is Tapestry you're talking about, which is an iconic... You know, Which was one of the biggest records of the of the of that I mean of the seventies. I mean of, of the all whole time. decade. You know, it was an album that was known for staying on the charts forever. Sure. So, you know, you're talking about Carol King here. So that that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, but, it's um, hard to argue it's hard to argue against the Carol King thing. But then I guess the best example of all time is nineteen sixty six, um, best contemporary rock and roll recording when Eleanor, both Eleanor Rigby and Good Vibrations lost to the new vaudeville band's Winchester Cathedral. See, I wouldn't have voted for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, li- I like Winchester Cathedral, but so it's I, not... So did it's, I, actually. You know. I, have to, I have to admit that in 66, I was a, I was a, a big fan. In fact, I, I had bought both of their vinyl albums back then. I, I was a big... Well, so was Paul McCartney, for that matter. I mean, yeah. Honey Pie. You know, I mean, he liked that kind of music, too. He loves know? that kind of music. Right. So, so but um, that was kind of amusing that, uh, I mean, that's the one, that's one of the big examples that everybody brings up is, you know, you got two great songs, Eleanor Rigby and Good Vibrations, and they both lost. Hmm. And where is Winchester Cathedral today? Well, you can still hear it once in a while. Once in on a while. On an oldie station. Yeah. But there's another case of going with a safer song than something that was very innovative at the time. Whether yeah, you're talking I, I about suppose, Eleanor Rigby. I suppose that's the best example of, of that. It's hard to, I, I don't know, I guess maybe in light of, Eleanor Rigby is not what you would call an unsa- uh, uh, an edgy song. No. Good vibrations, yes. But it, was not, but it was very different for its time. There's no other song that came out at that time like Eleanor Rigby. No, you had. I mean, you on had a pop Strangers album the, or a Strangers rock album. In the night, you had. But but for a rock band to put out something with that classical feel, and I know they did yesterday before that, but that was very striking, to have that much classical overtones, on a record and on a pop record and a single, for that time. I, I, I gotta I gotta disagree with you there because I think if yesterday yesterday paved the way for that, like you just said. Right, and for Eleanor Rigby not to, not to take that uh, an award in that particular case against both New Vaudeville Band, which they they lost Best Contemporary Rock and Roll Recording, and also against Sinatra. Now I can understand them not uh, not winning against Sinatra against Strangers in the Night because it's a, that's a great song, and Sinatra, you know, is a great vocalist. There's no there's no getting around that. Yeah, I agree with you. But uh, New Vaudeville Band, I, I, I can't really argue for that at all. Mm. Not, uh, not on a safe basis. Not on. Uh, it's really just kind of tough. I, I realize that in '66, things are you know music was different than it is now, and that was kind of as I re- I mean I remember uh, they were on Ed Sullivan and they did their whole act with the megaphones and all that stuff mm-hmm. and you know i remember that and they, they were all dressed up in in 1920s outfits or you know in old outfits and they played they played that to the hilt and the adults love that and yeah it really in the, in a you know in the shadow of history that just doesn't make it as far as i'm concerned it really doesn't all right well i agree with you there but i do believe that songs like yesterday and eleanor rigby were very different for its time and that doesn't mean, I mean, you do have pop songs like what Sinatra was doing, which had a full orchestra with it. Mm-hmm. It was a very good year, a masterpiece of a song there. But we're talking about something that was 
for, first of all, a rock band, and just nothing more than voices and strings. <laughs> You know, Eleanor Rigby was, was so different for that reason, as, as was yesterday, which had an acoustic guitar. Yesterday deserved to win, to me, Song of the Year. Which brings me to another point I want to bring up, which is when I look at all the awards the Beatles received as a group, mm -hmm. I find it really shocking. First of all, they only won Song of the Year once. And the song they won it with, which... <laughs> I have no doubt. I, I definitely love the song, like I love so many Beatles songs, happened to be Michelle. That is the only time the Beatles ever won Song of the Year. Mm -hmm. And it is a great song. It's one of the most covered Beatles songs. It's a song that got played so much at the time, and it's a very, you know, the melody is very unique, the chord changes are unique. Paul deserves a lot of credit for writing that song. But there's so many other great songs the Beatles did, and yet that's the only one that was ever Song of the Year. And that just amazes me. But then again, you also have to look at the other music coming out at that time and what was nominated. I mean, that brings up the point that you were just making about, about Eleanor Rigby. I mean, if Michelle can win, why not Eleanor Rigby? Right. Why not, why not Yesterday? Mm -hmm. it doesn't make any, that does not make any sense whatsoever. In fact, if you compare... Michelle and Yesterday and Alan and Rigby, I think if I was to to rank those three, I think I'd put Michelle third. I think Yesterday is is the best of the three, and I think Alan and Rigby is, is second. I don't know. It's hard for me to compare. I love all of them. No, I, I do too, but I'm saying in terms of the songs themselves, I think thinking about I, I, I there's so much. Yesterday was, was, it, it was incredibly innovative. For that, not only for them, but for music in general, and Michelle and um, Eleanor Rigby was with all the you know the string arrangements and everything. I mean that was astounding, and and Michelle had was a little more traditional. And I think the the fact that Michelle win, wins and the other two don't is 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 kind of kind of silly. It really is. Hmm. I don't know. It's just I love all three. It's really t uh, tough for me to pick what the best of those three were. But the thing is, you also have to realize that when you're dealing with Song of the Year or Record of the Year, you're dealing strictly with singles. And actually, this is kind of, this also makes me wonder, because Michelle was never a Beatles single. It got played a lot because it was a popular album cut, and actually there was a duo, David and Jonathan, that had a hit with it here in, in the States. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's it's kind of surprising to me that that was... <laughs> that was chosen as Song of the Year. It, there's so many other great songs the Beatles did that were singles that could have been Song of the Year, and that's the only one. And likewise, when you're talking about Album of the Year, the only Beatles album that won Album of the Year was Sgt. Pepper, mm -hmm. which is a shame. And uh, for those people that don't know, and this is really interesting, Revolver was nominated for Album of the Year, and you have to be thinking, by the way, the American Revolver. And uh, Magical Mystery Tour was nominated as Album of the Year and didn't win. And, um, well, first of all, the White Album wasn't even nominated. Mm -hmm. And Abbey Road was nominated but didn't win. Which, so, is, which is absolutely, that's flat, that's, wow. <laughs> it lost to Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Yes, it did. So, and Magical Mystery Tour lost to Glenn Campbell by the time I get to Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So let me just check to what Revolver lost to. Lost I'm, to Frank I'm, Sinatra, A Man and His Music. Yeah. I mean, so, th th some of these things are flabbergasting. Uh, you know, what they, what they ended up losing to. It's like, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Penny Lane never got Song of the Year. Penny Lane never got Song of the Year. Uh -huh. that's, it, and it never even got nominated. I mean, that's, um, that's amazing. How could that have not happened? Well, Hey Jude didn't get the Song of the Year. You know, if you study this through the years, not just the group with the solo, it's amazing how many times Paul Simon <laughs> beats out the Beatles or Simon and Garfunkel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, 68, it was all about Mrs. Robinson. And that was winning a lot of awards. Although Song of the Year was Bobby Russell. Uh, he was the songwriter for Little Green Apples, which right. was uh, done by O.C. Smith as the singer. But um, it's, it's pretty remarkable how many times the Beatles lost. 
So they won a lot of awards, don't get me wrong, through the years, but they, they lost so many that would shock you. But then again, you know, a lot of the ones that did win are wonderful records. Some of them I wouldn't argue at all. You know, Strangers in the Night wins, I don't mind. Fifth Dimension winning Up, Up, and Away. I think the Fifth Dimension were a fantastic vocal group. That was up against uh, best performance by a vocal group for Sgt. Pepper, for the mm-hmm. Beatles. I mean, Sgt. Pepper is, is a more landmark, important, historic recording than Up, Up, and Away, but that was a great performance from the Fifth Dimension and a great song. Right. So what are you going to do? But overall, how do you feel the Beatles have been treated? Do you, do you think that, for the most part, they did okay? Well, or, you'd have to, I mean, it, it's not... I mean, I don't think the Beatles are any different than anybody else. They've been nominated a lot more times than they've won. Um, hmm. I mean, that's just, that's just the way things go. But um, they, they have won for some great things. I mean, Bangladesh won Album of the Year. I right. Mean, that's, that's really fantastic. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Live and Let Die won Best Arrangement. That's really good. But, you know, you just mentioned the concept for Bangladesh winning Album of the Year. That and Double Fantasy are the only two solo Beatle albums that have ever won Album of the Year. And mm-hmm. that is shocking to me, because there have been so many great albums, solo albums through the years. Right. And like we just mentioned, All Things Must Pass, Losing to Carol King, Paul McCartney and Wings, Ben on the Run, was nominated for Album of the Year, lost to Stevie Wonder fulfilling his first finale. That doesn't bother me at all because Stevie Wonder to me is one of the greatest artists of all time and what he was putting out in the 70s was just incredible music. Tug of War lost to Toto. That I had a problem with. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I love Toto and I love uh, the production on Toto's records and they had four big hits on that that album, Toto 4, but Tug of War is one particular exception when I think Paul really deserved it. Right. He was also nominated for Best Album of Chaos and Creation in the Backyard, and he lost out there. He lost out to, I believe it was U2. i got to look that up here. But, um, yeah, I believe, you're, I believe you're right. Yes, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. He mm-hmm. lost there. So, uh, you know, Paul has lost quite a lot. You know what I find really interesting in, in observing with the solo careers of the Beatles? Mm. First of all, John was never nominated for any of his music before he died. None of his solo music was ever nominated for anything. And yeah, I find that, that, that to be pretty, shocking. That's pretty, that's pretty terrible. That's really... I can understand Plastic on All Band not being nominated. Now, that's a great album, mm-hmm. but I think that it was a little too shocking for its time. It was ahead of its time. Right. It was way too bare, was too intimate, way too raw. I think uh, the Academy would have had a tough time trying to make that album of the year. But I can't see why an album like Imagine wasn't at least nominated. And in the case of George Harrison, After All Things Must Pass and the concert for Bangladesh, he wasn't nominated for anything until The Traveling Wilburys. You know, not even Cloud Nine was nominated for album of the year. At least Wilburys got nominated. But yeah, Cloud Nine is is such a fantastic album. To this day, that is one of my... All-time favorite albums. I mm-hmm. love that album. But, um, and in the case of Ringo, he never was nominated for any of his albums. And I think that might not shock people, but I do think that the Ringo album at least deserved a nomination. Well, he did get the, the, five one, the surround sound nomination that he, that he lost. But, yeah, the, when he was coming up through his solo career, the Ringo album didn't get nominated. None of those... No, those really, you know, those really good Ringo albums. Ringo's just kind of all around gotten very little respect, and it's just, it's really kind of sad. I know. He's like the Rodney Dangerfield of rock. (laughs) Yeah. In a lot of ways. And, you know, I've said this before on our show, but in 1992, he put out Time Takes Time, and I think that the albums that he's put out from that moment on, especially the albums with Mark Hudson and the Roundheads, are amongst the best of his career, and I wish that somebody would acknowledge that and i'm not saying that it should win album of the year but it should maybe get a nomination here and there but a lot of people just don't take his solo music seriously well he doesn't even uh, he doesn't really take his solo stuff that seriously because in you know in concert he talks about 
you know, the six people who bought his albums. He, well, you know, I, I don't know. I think that must hurt him inside. It probably because does. he does put the effort in on his albums, and he wouldn't do that if he didn't care. And then and, he takes out and goes out on tour and plays songs from those albums like he is now. Yeah. At this moment, you know, so, yeah. And then in the case of Paul McCartney, the interesting thing about Paul, if you notice, all the awards that he's either won or have been nominated for, they're not for his songwriting. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but he either gets nominated for his vocals or for the arrangements of his songs. Right. Uh, that's something that I find a little bit bizarre. You know, he's one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Well, and he did get nominated for a song written for a motion picture in 2002 for Vanilla Sky. That's true. But that lost to Randy Newman, and I have to say, as a big Randy Newman fan, I have no, I have no problem with that because I'm a huge Randy Newman fan. Vanilla Sky wasn't that great a song anyway, really, in the in the scheme of things. Oh, I liked it, but um, you know, this, this, he's done a lot better than Vanilla Sky, but True. I do like that song. But you look at the awards that Paul's gotten through the years. Uh, let's see, we got Best Arrangement Accompanying Vocalist for Live and Let Die with George Martin getting the award as Arranger. Mm -hmm. Best Engineered Recording for Paul McCartney and Wings, Band on the Run with Jeff Emmerich getting an award as Engineer. He actually won Best Instrumental Recording for the Rockestra theme. Which is really interesting. That's uh, not a song I would have even expected him to win for. I love that as an instrumental, and it's got such a great edge to it. It's a simple it instrumental, but I, I love it. Yeah, it does. I, it, you're right. And um, hopefully he'll put out the, um, the uh, Campuchia um, thing again, because uh, uh, they do that live in there. And uh, it'd be nice to, to see that again. Hmm. Also, in 2011, he won for Best Solo Rock Vocal Performance for Helter Skelter from Good Evening New York City. Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking vocals, or we're talking about production and arrangements. And that was a pretty lively version, the, the uh, Good Evening New York City version. Right. But, so. uh, you know, I would strongly advise anyone who's interested in the Grammy Awards and how the Beatles have fared through the years to... To look at this list that Steve has put together, and all you got to do really is just Google Beatles and Grammy Awards, and you'll see uh, a link for examiner.com. Bring it up, and it's all there. No, it's not on Examiner now. This is on the uh, my Abbey Road site. I brought it up today, right before coming here, <laughs> right before doing this show. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get the whole list. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, I may have, I may have, I think I linked off of one of the stories I did the other day, but. Um, the actual list is not on is not actually on Examiner. It's link it is linked from Examiner though. But yeah, I mean it it's just it's amazing some of the stuff that they've won and some of the stuff they haven't won. Um you know, you just kinda shake your head. And like I was saying, a lot of the way things fared, especially in the sixties, was pretty much because the industry at that time was wasn't controlled by young people, it was controlled by older people. And a lot of I think a lot of the voters were older people at that point, and obviously that's changed now. Mm. You know, the industry is run by young people, and as you can tell by a lot of what get, gets nominated and a lot of what wins, um, there's a strong youth contingent in the vote, and um, that wasn't the case in the '60s at all. Rock and roll was a was a an old man's game in the '60s. Well, yeah. I don't know if rock and roll had the credibility yet. I mean, rock and roll, for all intents and purposes, started in the mid-50s. And right. artists had the feeling that their careers would only last a few years. In fact, the Beatles thought that way when they first started out. Mm -hmm. There's always, and I bring it up every now and then, uh, the interview of the four of them around 1963, where John's saying, we could be big-headed and say we're going to last for five years. And right. in their minds, five years was a long time. Right. So, you know, I think uh, there was always that feeling amongst the adults that this is a passing thing and it's not going to last that long. And it became such an economically viable genre of music. And, uh, you know, artists like the Beatles helped to make it the respectable genre that it is. Right. Right. And, and, yeah, and they really had 
more of an impact. I mean, you can say that, but the real effect was a lot stronger, I think, than than most people realize. The Beatles did have a heck of an impact on the industry, and they really they really changed the course of the uh, the Grammy Awards and the industry itself. And there's there's no getting around that. Uh, I'm not just saying that because you know I like the Beatles. I mean, it's re- it really was true. And when you went through the '60s and you saw how things changed, and by the '70s, you know, things had really matured. It was because of the Beatles. It was very much because of the Beatles. There's no question about that. Hmm. So overall, you know, I'm I'm pleased with the awards the Beatles have gotten, and they're you know, obviously every artist loses. But it is kind of staggering when you do look at this list at how many times the Beatles were nominated, group and solo, and lost out. And I think uh, anyone who, who looks at this list will be very surprised. You can say, yeah, they won a lot of times and they lost a lot of times, but I still think there are some gaping um, mistakes that I think the record industry would probably like to take back if they, if, if they could. And I don't think, you know, obviously they can't, but I think they, they would if they could. Well, the thing is, you know, you got to put yourself in the mindset of that time period. I know. Not thinking 40 years later that this catalog of what the Beatles did as a band and a lot of their solo music is going to be looked upon as being such treasured, iconic songs and albums. Right. If they knew that then, they probably would have voted things differently. Right. But and you it can really only do up, what, what happens in the moment. It really points up to the fact of what the whole industry was like back then. It really is is an excellent picture of the way the industry was and why things were the way they were. Um, So you can, uh, I mean, that's just the way it was. Um, It's history now, and and to look back on it, I'm glad it's not that way anymore because music is, is that much better for the way it is now. Uh, but uh, it was a different, it was a much different scene. Anybody that that uh, remembers, you know, that was around in '64 will will know that very well. It was a much different scene back then. And actually, just one final thing: one thing that the Grammys have done in recent years is that they've had their own Hall of Fame. Right. So they've been able to induct certain songs and certain albums from the Beatles and put it in there because they probably, you'd have to say, they overlooked a lot of that work back then. And the Beatles so. have, have a good uh, a good chunk of that Hall of Fame. Pepper is in there. Abbey Road is in there. Revolver is in there. Imagine. The Rubber Soul, Imagine. Yeah. I was going imagine through the, the Beatles, al- yeah. the Beatles yeah. albums first. Right. White Album, Let It Be, and then, Penny, and then a number of singles, Penny Lane, Let It Be. Um, oh, Meet the Beatles is also there. Uh, Joe Cocker's with a little help from my friends is there, which I think is kind of funny, actually. Some people look at that as being the definitive version. You know, I love it, but (laughs) you can't top the Beatles version. No. For me, anyway. No, you can't. I I like that, too. As a matter of fact, I was listening to um, Mad Dogs and Englishmen the other day, which is an incredible album. That's a fantastic album. Right. Uh, Yeah, but they've, I mean, they've done, they've done really well. The only, the only, the one big, thing that they need to correct um the only beetle that's not in the hall of fame is ringo and that's that's got to change that's not a grammy thing though but i mean that's got to change there's no no excuse for that let's start a movement going steve we could do that (laughs) we could start we could start a petition online like uh like is going for a couple of other people i know there's a friend of mine's got a jim croce uh petition in the works i already signed that petition too yeah i did too I did too, and, and we uh, all know Martin Lewis has been trying to get Brian Epstein. Yeah, in and that's there. another. I, that's another. That's amazing that that hasn't happened. I don't understand that at all. Mm-hmm. I don't understand that at all. But maybe with the maybe when the movies come out that are in the works, maybe that'll change that. Hopefully, but yeah, I mean that's just that's crazy that uh, that hasn't happened. Anyway, we've got to bring this show to a close. And we just want to thank everybody for listening, and thanks to Fab4Radio.com for carrying our show. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, there's a million different ways to do so. But we're just going to mention a few of them. First of all, Steve, 
tell folks so they can get in touch with you? Well, you can get in touch with me on Facebook uh, under my name. The show has its own page, Things We Said Today. You can email me at beetlesexaminer at gmail.com. You can also, uh, on the examiner page, you can, on the examiner site, you can look at Beatles Examiner and find me. I'm practically everywhere. I'm on Twitter under my own name and under, um, so you can catch me there. I'm, I'm, I'm just about everywhere. And Ken, you're all over the place too. Well, not as much as you. <laughs> There's my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. There's lots of interviews in there with people connected to the Beatles, and there's trivia posted every single week with lots of prizes to give away. I sound like my other show, Every Little Thing. Yes, you do. And um, there's my own Facebook page, which is Ken Michaels. And so those are the only ways at the moment. I'm going to have a Facebook page soon for the show, Every Little Thing. Okay. So look out for that. One more uh, Grammy win that we didn't catch, this is kind of offbeat, is um, on the page I have covers of Beatles songs that have won Grammy Awards and... The one that is really that really sticks out is the Chipmunk sing the Beatles, which is if you haven't heard that, um, <laughs> it's hilarious and it's it's on CD. I know it's on CD. It's well worth picking up if you don't have it. And that one, and that did one win best engineer best engineered album, special or novel effects at one in sixty four. Well, that so, makes sense. You know yeah. that wins, and the White Album doesn't even get nominated. Right. And Tug yeah. of War doesn't win. Right, I know. <laughs> and Chaos and Creation doesn't win. No, but the Chipmunks win. The Chipmunks win. It's crazy. So anyway, thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Take care.